Okay, so to start us off uh, this month, we have Tim Sherratt. As I said, he has been looking at ways uh, that Wikidata can include Australian government data, such as linking Wikidata to the National Archives of Australia. For those who use Twitter, uh, you may have seen his regular tweets on that very subject and the amazing work that he's been doing, creating resources uh, around his own Glam Workbench website. Uh, he'll also be at the WOW conference next week, so don't miss that. Uh, and I will put the, uh, the Glam Workbench into the chat and a recent blog post that he wrote for us as well, which you can read later on. Don't read it now, because it's about to do his presentation. Um, and then I'll also put a link in for WOW, um, just in case you haven't registered, because uh, you will be able to watch it online later. Um, and now I hand you over to Tim. Thank you. Um, thanks, James, and thanks, everybody. Um, it's great to be here with you. Um, and thanks, of course, to uh, Wikimedia Australia for supporting the work that I've been doing. Um, although I'm sort of reporting on, on it tonight, it's not at all um, that I feel it's it's finished. It's not the end of the project. It's really, it's really uh, the beginning for me in some ways because uh, working on this has um, really uh, opened up all sorts of interesting questions and possibilities that I want to explore further. Um, and, uh, and I'll be talking about a, a bit more about that as I go on. Um, apologies if I'm a bit croaky. I've already given a six hour workshop today. Um, so I'm hoping I just don't start speaking gibberish at some point. Um, but um, um, I might start uh, sharing my screen. I don't have um, slides today, but um, I do have uh, some things that I want to show you. If I can find where Firefox has gone to. There we go. Um, okay, so that's the, the blog post that James was referring to. Um, where I've talked uh, in detail about uh, some of the, um, what I'm going to be describing tonight. But I thought I'd give uh, use tonight to, to give a bit of context to, to this and what I've been doing and where um, I think uh, it might, might go in the future. Um, so first of all, I mean, I suppose it starts for me, uh, this particular project with um, the collections of the National Archives of Australia, which um, um, I've felt very passionate about for a long time. As a, as a baby historian, it was really the place where I started to do my first research. Um, and just the richness of the, the collections is, is just amazing, astonishing. Um, and they uh, make, uh, obviously, their data available. Oh, that's one of the annoying things about record search. Um, they make their data available through their online database record search. Um, and again, it has uh, a very uh, rich data, not only about their, their own collections, but also about the agencies that create the records in their collections. And I'll talk a bit more about that structure in a minute. So there's fabulous data there, but record search itself as, a, as an interface to this material is quite limited. Um, and um, uh, I mean, I should also say I did work at the National Archives for a number of years uh, and again was frustrated by, um, you know, lacking really ways to um, make people understand the richness and the possibilities of the material that's held by the National Archives. Um, so over the years, I've been involved in a number of projects which has tried to um, sort of uh, expose that material and make it available for people to use and see and understand in different types of ways. Um, so, for example, um, the, the real face of White Australia is actually a sort of ongoing project that I'm involved in. Um, and back in uh, 2011, um, Kate Bagnall, a historian of Chinese Australia, and I uh, downloaded, I think, about 12,000 uh, digitised images from the National Archives of Australia. Um, ran them through a, a facial detection script um, and created um, this wall of faces. Um, this is, it's been updated a little bit since then, but it's pretty much the same. Um, to show you the documents that these uh, photos come from. So these were documents which were used in the administration of the White Australia policy. So basically, if you were, you know, deemed not to be white uh, um, and you traveled overseas, you had to carry special documentation with you or else basically you wouldn't be let back into the country. 
you would face the dictation test and that was a mechanism of exclusion. So there are thousands of these documents and they're amazing and they're sitting in the National Archives of Australia and we wanted to make them more visible. We wanted people to understand them. So um, we created uh, that wall of faces. We've since done other things. So actually just a couple of weeks ago, we launched the latest version of a, a transcription project, which is actually um, getting people to uh, transcribe uh, um, information from these certificates so that we can actually explore in more detail the sort of uh, the population and their movements uh, across that wide Australia period. Um, I've also um, spent a bit of time uh, downloading uh, publicly available ASIO files, which are also available through record search. Um, and wrote a, a little program which found redactions in ASIO files uh, and assembled a collection of something like 200,000 redactions. Um, and you can actually, there, I do have a, a red bubble store where you can actually buy scarves which are covered in redactions um, amongst other things. Um, and again, it's you know giving people a different perspective on those collections, these things that are in glam collections, giving people a different ways of seeing them and using them and understanding them. Um, and one of the best things that happened in terms of uh, pulling out these redactions was um, I got to discover a whole new genre of art, um, which uh, is uh, redaction art. Um, so some of the people who were actually doing the redactions of the files obviously got a bit bored uh, and they started turning the redactions into to little little animals and ships and things like that. So these are actually in files in the National Archives of Australia. Um, so uh, as well as sort of uh, creating these sort of alternative interfaces, I suppose, to, to record search data, I've also created a series of tools to help people get data out of record search. Um, the latest version uh, of uh, this, uh, this is the latest version of this uh, data scraper. Um, so record search doesn't have an API, an application programming interface. Um, so to get data out of it, it's a, it's a matter of screen scraping the data. Um, and it's quite a complicated business because of the nature of the technology behind record search. But um, versions of this scraper have you know, been around now for, I don't know, nine or 10 years. Um, and um, I've used it in you know, a number of these projects, such as the redactions and the White Australia policy one. Um, uh, so this is available now, this software, it's a Python package and you can download it and you can uh, pull out data out of record search to do, uh, you know, all sorts of analysis or whatever sort of projects that you're interested in. Um, and uh, some examples of that are in the um, record search section of the GLAM workbench. Um, so the GLAM workbench really brings together a whole lot of stuff that I've been working on over the past 10 years or more in terms of helping people make use of uh, the data that's available through GLAM collections. Um, and um, uh, so it's not uh, obviously just um, the National Archives of Australia. It's also, um, there's a lot of uh, resources and tools and examples of working with data from Trove, for example. Uh, both the newspapers and other bits of Trove, uh, various other libraries and archives, mostly focused on Australia, but um, some other collections. So there's a um, quite a big collection of tools and resources that help you use web archives, for example, um, both the Internet Archive as well as the UK Web Archive and the Australian Web Archive. So, um, uh, so uh, this is uh, something which I'm continuing to develop and I'm very pleased to have added a, a Wikidata uh, section as, as part of uh, the work on this project. Um, and I'll show you what's in there shortly. Um, but this brings together a number of examples of using that data from record search. So various things that I've developed over the years, ways of looking at that data that exists within record search. Um, now, just to, I suppose, talk about the, uh, the, the, the nature of the data in record search a bit more. So record search, um, and I, I sort of descend into archives nerdery a bit here because it's really fascinating, the data structures uh, within there. Um, 
So uh, Record Search is based on something called the Commonwealth Record Series System. Um, and it's a way of organizing knowledge, um, uh, organizing the collections uh, within the National Archives, which in, it, it was quite revolutionary at the time in terms of describing archival collections, because they didn't just sort of describe a body of records and say that that was created by a particular agency. They actually documented um, the, the little histories of agencies, how they related to each other, how they changed over time, um, and um, uh, also uh, described the functions that different agencies carried out within the context of government over time. So, and then uh, around those agencies or connected to those agencies, which are all interconnected themselves, are the records they create. Um, which are organized into series. So an agency performs certain functions um, and it uh, creates certain records or record series. Um, and I can actually show you a little thing. I actually created this when I was at the National Archives, this little little uh, uh, pyramid. It's still there, uh, which shows you how much record search has changed so it's been 10 years. Um, but it just shows you the, the, the arrangement of the entities within record search. So agencies, which is the ones I've been working with lately, um, they're connected up to organizations, they perform functions, they create series, but then of course, there's a whole lot of relationships within the agencies. So agencies have uh, you know, predecessors and successors. Um, they, have, they can be controlled by other agencies or they may control sub agencies. So there's some really uh, sort of rich uh, connections, data connections and relationships there. But, and again, this is getting back to the limits of the sort of interfaces that we have currently to work with uh, these sorts of collections. You, it, it's difficult to actually search across these sorts of relationships or explore or visualize the relationships between agencies within record search itself. It's very much, a, you know, type your text into a search box and get back a list of results. You've got no way of understanding that totality, that sort of, uh, you know, rich model of Australian government, which is effectively documented within record search. So that's really where, um, why I, I suggested this as a, as, a, as a project of working with Wikidata, because if we could get some of that data out of record search and into Wikidata and linked with data, which is already available uh, in Wikidata, we would then open up new ways of querying that data. Um, and of course, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the data model within Wikidata, the, the, uh, the having properties and statements and relationships fits very well with that sort of entity relationship model, which is at the basis of the series system within record search. So um, I thought if we could, you know, as a first instance, start to get uh, well, as I should, I should also point out that each agency within record search has its own unique identifier, which is obviously a, a crucial element to this. Uh, indeed, all of the uh, the different parts of them have have their own identity uh, identifiers. So, organisations, agencies, um, series, uh, and Commonwealth persons. There are people as well. All have identifiers. And so as part of this project, we've got uh, that uh, those entity identifiers as a as a property now in in um, Wikidata. Um, so I've been focusing on the agencies, but those identifiers can now also be added to people as well, those Commonwealth person identifiers. Um, so yes, yeah, so the idea of of getting those identifiers uh, into uh, first of all, into existing Wikidata entries, but then also adding entries that are uh, that are not there. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about government agencies or government departments, first of all, I suppose, the sort of top level agencies, um, uh, they are, you know, those sort of changes are this, uh, documented by, uh, you know, when we have machinery of government changes, uh, you know, when a new government comes in or there's a, a shape up of shake up of shake up of departments, you have a, a machinery of government document, which shows how uh, different um, uh, pieces of what pieces of legislation are um, uh, being looked after by different government departments. Um, and so that you have those sort of different changes. Uh, so um, it, it can, you know, get quite complex at times, as we'll see. So um, 
the first stage, obviously, of this project was actually, well, the first stage was getting the property into uh, into Wikidata, accepted as a Wikidata property. Um, and then I, uh, using the tools that I had, I harvested out all of the agencies from um, record search for agency data. There's about, there's data on about 8,000 agencies um, within record search. Um, and um, uh, then I started to think about how that could be modeled within Wikidata. Um, and, you know, that's when I started to really grapple with some of the complexities and the, um, uh, the limitations of, of, of some of the data. Um, so um, the first thing I, I suppose I should say is in terms of uh, agencies within record, uh, record search, there are um, a number of uh, record search identifies different types of agency. Uh, this is under agency status down here. So we've got Department of State, head office, regional or state office, in, in these other ones as well. Um, so my first focus was departments of state. So, you know, these are the, the government departments which do the, the core work of government. Um, uh, but I've also been adding head offices and some uh, regional or state offices as well. Um, uh, so in the first instance, um, I've been taking those uh, those uh, um, uh, identifiers from record search for government departments, uh, and then using you know tools which you all be familiar with in terms of open refine and quick statements to match those uh, agency records with ones which were already in Wikidata, add the identifier, um, and also add some other data from record search, specifically the uh, existence dates of departments. Um, so record search has, uh, um, all of the records have uh, the dates when an agency started and, and uh, are finished within them. Um, so making sure that all that's added into Wikidata as well as just uh, a few other sort of making sure they're all sort of associated with Australia and things like that uh, and particular instances of uh, departments of uh, uh, Australian government. Um, so there's um, uh, and having got those identifiers in and I added departments which weren't obviously already in Wikidata um, and sometimes you know, this is one of the, when things start to get complicated is that you may have a government uh, department which has the same name over a period of time, but whose functions have actually changed. Um, so machinery of government has actually changed some of the, the, uh, the their um, responsibilities over time. Um, so you'll see, you know, there's a number of different departments of defense, for example. Um, I think there's a couple of treasuries as well. Um, the only I think pretty much the only department has, which has gone through unchanged is the Department of um, uh, Attorney General's department. Um, so that meant that, you know, it, where some agencies would be in uh, Wikidata as a, a the sort of current agency with a particular name, but I had to add the sort of historical versions of that, which related to those previous uh, groups of, of functions and uh, legislation. Um, so, um, having added the entities, I then added the relationships between them to get the predecessors and successors. Um, that was a bit complicated because um, in many cases, uh, you know, agencies aren't sort of fully replaced by another agency. It's that they're, the functions that they do may be split up between a number of agencies. They may even go um, to uh, an agency which is already in existence. So some of their functions are hived off and given to another, you know, there are all these sorts of complexities, right? Um, now, I was hoping uh, to sort of uh, be able to um, sort of map those changes a bit more accurately than, than I was in the end. So record search, where it has uh, that sort of uh, relationship where one agency goes to another, um, it does have the dates when those sort of changes shifted, and it sometimes uh, does include a note about what sort of responsibilities shifted. Um, but there's a sort of a bit of a mismatch there because 
really what record search does is it describes the, the you know the activities of government as functions they've got a set a, a, a thesaurus of functions which it used to describe those but they're not currently used in describing the transitions from one government department to another so there's a bit of a gap there um, what would be fabulous to to uh, and what I would like to do some more analysis of is um, seeing uh, there are functions I'm getting into far too much detail here I'm sorry it's you know getting a bit enthusiastic about it but the um, functions are associated with agencies and they do have date ranges though past analysis has shown that even they can be a bit inconsistent but there is the sort of beginnings of that data which could actually break down the functioning of the, the activities of government to individual functions and map those over time as they move between departments. But there's a lot more sort of data analysis and cleanup, I think, that would be needed in order to get to that point. But that, that would be a really exciting uh, thing to do. But as it is, um, so we've got that data about departments in uh, to Wikidata now. And um, I was able to start then doing some uh, visualization of that uh, that um, those relationships. Um, so this this is uh, within the GLAM workbench. So the GLAM workbench is a, and these are now public, so you can go in and use them. So the GLAM workbench is a collection of Jupyter notebooks. Um, I know that that um, the Wikimedia itself has a has a notebook environment where people can uh, work with data. Um, so you may have um, seen something similar, um, but um, it's really um, uh, just showing the sort of sparkle queries that you can do of Wikidata with uh, across the government agencies and sort of then ways you can start to uh, explore and analyze it. Um, so this is, uh, I can just, I'm just hitting shift enter on these little cells here in order to run them. Uh, and uh, you can start to, this was a, a sort of example of a, a like a Gantt chart of agencies showing um, the years that they were uh, they started and then ended and you can mouse over to see uh, the department so up the top here uh, uh, we will have the sort of original departments like attorney general's department it slides off here so you can see attorney general's department going through to the present day um, so that that was a, a sort of early attempt to start playing with that data um, this one is a bit more interesting um, so this uh, creates a, a network diagram. Uh, I need to run it again. Um, so it's pulling the data from Wikidata using Sparkle queries um, and then just uh, sort of developing a sort of customized visualization. Um, uh, so this is the network graph. So and I find this quite interesting. Um, so the colors here represent decades. Uh, and it's basically going down in time. So we're starting at 1901 and heading towards the, the current departments down here. And you can see that uh, things were relatively stable for effectively the first 50 or 60 years of the Australian uh, Commonwealth government. Uh, well, this is the World War II era and there was some changing of departments. Uh, Defence split up into different um, departments uh, during the war and we had the Department of Post-War Reconstruction and those sorts of things. So there are a few changes there. But what you can see is when we get to the 1970s um, and the, particularly the Whitlam government, we had um, you know, a lot of rapid changes in the structure and organization and functions of government departments. And that has continued on ever since. Um, so the, uh, the size of these nodes indicates how long they lived for effectively. So you can see there, none of them have, uh, well, most of them don't have a very long lifespan um, as they get sort of merged and redivided and things like that. So it was an interesting exercise to actually sort of uh, explore, uh, see how you could visualize these sorts of things. Uh, I've created a, another a notebook, which enables you to do this for an individual department. Um, and this actually runs as a sort of uh, an app, effectively using a, a thing called Voila, which is a way of, of uh, representing Jupyter Notebooks. So um, we can, in here, we can just, uh, from the drop down, choose a department to get an idea of its sort of context and change over time. Um, 
So again, this is pulling data live from Wikidata uh, and showing the connections. So this is the agency we selected, and then it goes sort of three steps in either direction to see the agencies that were associated or its predecessors and successors. Um, so, um, and since then, I mean, this was the sort of start of that work and I've added more agencies. So I've gone down that list of uh, different types of agencies to look at uh, the uh, head offices and others. So I think there's about 1400 now in Wikidata, which have those uh, national archives identifiers. I've still got some relationships to add between the, the, uh, the head office type agencies. Head office is a bit misleading because it includes things like royal commissions, for example. Um, and uh, various other authorities and committees and bureaus and, and things like that. Um, so yes, I've got some more relationships uh, to add for those. Um, but I've also started to get, you know, a bit fascinated by some of the other possibilities, um, particularly for um, HAS researchers, humanities and social sciences researchers, which the GLAM workbench was developed for, to enable them to think about how they can uh, use Wikidata in their research. Um, so, um, uh, so I did start doing some playing around well, with uh, looking at info, uh, data about, that's not the one, data about individuals, uh, people. Um, so just pulling out sort of um, a year of birth, for example, of people uh, born in Australia who are in Wikidata. Um, I did some work around occupations uh, and occupations over time. Um, so this is again pulling data from the, the Sparkle interface and then building some custom visualizations on top of that. So these are Australian wool footballers, Australian wool footballers. Um, uh, first names, <laughs> uh, some word cloud. So I just sort of started exploring different ways we could re represent some of that data in terms of thinking about uses uh, for um, humanities research. Um, also become rather fascinated with the range of identifiers which are already in use, which you probably have been adding to these records. Um, certainly you have been adding to these records, um, but just sort of the range of them uh, was uh, um, really interesting. Um, so looking at uh, what's already there and then thinking about, uh, uh, you know, what becomes possible when uh, other collections are sort of adding to that and linking their own records and that sort of network of relationships that they can then pull back from Wikidata in order to reach their, enrich their own collections. And there are obviously some fa uh, fabulous possibilities there, which, um, I, you know, would be, would be great to explore further. Um, and um, I suppose getting back to that point, so the, you know, in creating those visualizations of the, the government agency data in record search, um, what uh, has really become possible is that we can query record search effectively within Wikidata. So we can understand what's in that collection by building these Wikidata queries, which are using those identifiers. And so I started to think about other ways of doing that. Um, with other collections. So there are obviously a lot of entries within Wikidata which have Australian Dictionary of Biography identifiers. Um, and the ADB doesn't actually make much of its own data available uh, openly. But by using Wikidata, we can actually build queries around the ADB content, can, content in a way we can't within the ADB site itself. So it, it, from the outside, we can build more complex uh, uh, and uh, uh, different types of queries and questions than we can within the uh, interfaces which are provided by these sorts of services. So just as an example of that, uh, this is a, a Sparkle query which shows us the people in the ADB, the youngest people who have entries within the Australian Dictionary of Biography. So, so this is obviously not a query you can do within the ADB site itself, but because those identifiers have been added to Wikidata, we can build a, a sort of parallel interface to the ADB and explore it in different types of ways. So this has got me sort of really excited about thinking about other ways we can build these sort of, um, you know, parallel interfaces 
um, by adding these identifiers into Wikidata. And it's all because of the great work of people like you who have been adding these identifiers in that we've got to this point now uh, where we can really start to, to, uh, to make use of this, explore it in uh, different types of ways. Um, so really from here, I'm continuing to, to add some of that agency data, but I will also, uh, at the moment, um, the GLAM workbench has, um, as I said, has a Wikidata section. So it's got those three uh, notebooks which visualize information about government departments within it. And you can run these live online. Um, but I'll be adding uh, a number of more notebooks. So the ones around people, the ones around the ADB and things like that will be added to that over coming weeks. Um, and again, I'll be trying to um, use this as a way of getting uh, humanities and social sciences researchers thinking about the data that's available there and the perspective it gives them on these sort of existing collections. Um, so um, yeah, I think I, I, I'd better wrap it up there. Um, again, thanks very much for supporting this and uh, look, really looking forward to continuing to develop some of these things specifically uh, and making you know, new resources available through the GLAM workbench. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, does anyone have any questions for, for Tim? I saw there was some put into the chat. Uh, there's a question there about, is the model the same for state archives? Um, generally, yes, the series system is uh, used across uh, uh, other government archives within Australia. Um, the level at which things are described, you know, the amount of data they may have uh, make available is, is can differ, but um, the series system is also used in um, other um, uh, sort of um, uh, archives as well so not just government archives the series system is can be more is more broadly used uh sam just put a question in the chat he just asked if uh the data model is compatible with um govdirectory.org uh i don't know the answer to that um uh I did. Yeah, sorry, I, I probably could have just looked it up myself, couldn't I? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it, it's a new, um, well, seemingly new idea of using Wikidata as a back for a government directory. Um, it sounds exactly like what you've done for Australia. Yeah. Um, so there was yeah. actually a tweet about this too. Somebody uh, responded to uh, the post, uh, I think, from people who are doing that, the gov directory asking about some of that data. I haven't had a chance to sort of look at the at the answer to their question yet, but um, yeah, so um, so I don't know exactly, but I mean, uh, it's obviously the same sort of sort of, of, of data and the, the same sort of um, intention behind it. I think I mentioned it to you in an email. Uh, uh, I said, uh, oh, there's a very, there's a project. Oh, about, yes, yes, know, yes, yes. Global, yeah. yeah That's global, right, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not a question, but um, but yeah, and I think I might have mentioned this to you in an email too. But uh, but I'll you know yeah, just something uh, similar. I was I sort of had in mind, uh, but haven't had a chance to work on given my not copious free time. But uh, um, was was sort of ministries as in um, not depart government departments, but the the ministerial you know, portfolios or positions, and uh, and you know that's sort of quite similar in that usually I guess they're they're almost parallel, and then the department changes name or splits or merges uh you know the the ministry has the same uh thing so um so yeah it'd be interesting to to sort of try and tie what you've done there to to make it a bit easier to to see the history of that over time yeah. and um yeah and um some of those commonwealth people relationships might also help in that um i'm yeah. not sure i've never been quite sure the extent to which that is used within record search, like how how many, uh, I don't think it's complete basically, um, but um, but certainly, you know, there are some of those relationships between both um, at the ministerial level, but also, uh, you know, department, departmental secretaries uh, are sometimes named as, as Commonwealth people and associated with agencies as well. Um, and then Amanda's just raised her hand, she's got a question. 
Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about um, as I put a comment in the chat, you know, a, 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 an issue like arts or science. You know, they they sometimes they're in, sometimes they just disappear. You know, with the the previous government, there was no science in anywhere, and that was a big you know kind of brouhaha about that, and then it got added in. Is there a way to sort of see where, say, something like arts? Presumably, you know, you, when you look at your history, when they only had what five, five agencies at the big, you know, in 1901, arts wasn't there. Somewhere along the line, probably in 1971, <laughs> it got it added in, uh, and then. You know, it gets, it's a classic thing that it gets sort of shunted around from distant di to different agencies or it drops off. Is there a way to see some of that kind of? Um, yeah, so you sort of, uh, you can see some of it. So I'll, I'll just, um, if I just go back to that, that network uh, graph, for example, I can show you is it, um, with with the things that you're showing it's a bit hard to see because oh, there was sorry. nothing, nothing yeah. that was identifiable as a particular agency like you know could you track the agency as it as it went down through time kind of thing so um so yes yeah, so these are you know individual agencies and if you click on any of these uh sort of nodes in the network graph um, and it's a, and you can zoom in and you can see where that uh, the sort of functions of that agency have gone to different agencies so you can start to track those um, connections through time in terms of the sort of named functions and that's what I was saying it would be great to to have those sorts of um, data about the named functions in there um, but it's not at the moment not sort of consistent enough within record search to pull out to show so you could say you know the arts function and you could trace that through individual departments um so what you're sort of really working with here are the 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 um the names of the, the looking at the departments and seeing what sort of uh what sort of departments then followed them uh and how that sort of tracks through time um and similarly those sort of individual ones uh, as I was showing here, you can start to see, um, uh, you can choose a sort of department from here um, and start to see where uh, the connections are from that, how the sort of uh, 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 responsibilities are flowed uh, from there. So there are possibilities there. It's, the data is not quite um, uh, complete, but I think it's certainly something to explore further. Uh, so we've got two questions. Uh, so I think Margaret may have raised her hand first, then we'll get to Sam. Oh, Margaret, you're muted. I popped my question into the um, oh. chat, um, yeah. but I was interested in the connection between your departments and um, legislation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, and was... just sort of hoping that it might tie in beautifully mm. because... Um, yeah, anyway, so I, I was hoping you might have to expand on that perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, that was something I've certainly been thinking about, and I was going to mention it. So thanks for thanks for raising it. Um, yeah, so I mean, machinery of government changes link departments to specific pieces of legislation. So they have responsibility for certain pieces of legislation. That data isn't, I mean, it's in the machinery of government documents, wherever they might be. Um, it doesn't seem to be available directly through through record search at the moment. Um, but it's not just government departments. I mean, what's uh, I think also very interesting is the range of other types of agencies that are specifically created by legislation. Um, so, uh, you know, various boards or councils or commissions or whatever. Um, and they're often quite easy to find the connections because the name of the agency is in the piece of legislation. Um, yes. And as I was finding this, you know, as I was trying to disambiguate uh, government agencies, I, I was getting the, the legislation pop up. Um, so um, I think there's certainly uh, with some of a number of those uh, sort of lower level agencies, linking them to the, the legislation that created them yeah. would be fantastic. It, it would be because one of the things that bothers me about Wikipedia is we're really very ahistorical. I mean, it's all the present. 
and um, anybody born after whatever thinks that life has always been, you know, exactly as it is now. And um, I just, you know, you know, I was thinking about writing an article about a person and one of the things that was important was that in the times when we didn't have, have dual citizenship, you know, heads of department who um, reported to ministers were required to be Australian citizens. Um, but, you know, that's sort of all lost in the mist, midst of mists of time. And I, I'd sort of love to be able to tie it all together because um, life has changed enormously and we don't see it in Wikipedia as well as I would like to see it, you know, neither in Wikidata. Yeah, and the, it, I was also the um, that the work um, that has been done on the Australian legislation is just fantastic, and I was I was looking at that too as a um, as something to point uh, like humanities researchers to um, to have that available in that sort of form to to be queryable. Um, again, opens up some really interesting possibilities. Uh, Sam, did you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. Um... I think your your um, creation of an API for record search is is wonderful work. Um, it, I mean, you're no longer at the, at the National Archives, but um, do, do you know what their plans are? Is record search going to ever change? Is there going to be an API? Um, and also, like, yeah, what is the legal status of your scraper? Uh, well, the 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 all of their data is now available CC BY um so oh cool um uh, uh so yeah i don't think there's issues there um they've sort of aligned themselves with other government departments in terms of um that that uh sort of metadata um uh look i don't know um i um like we even when i was at the national archives you know there was money being spent on planning for a record search replacement which never happened um and um uh, you know i've heard that there has been some well there have already there've been a couple of projects which have come and gone and uh, nothing's actually happened and so i'm not quite sure where things are right now i mean there was uh, you know i did have discussions about an api probably you know 6 7 years ago um there was a short lived api to some of the world war 1 records which now seems to have gone away um, so I wish I had an answer for you, but I really don't. <laughs> and, and, and the, 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 um, copyright thing, um, like importing into Wikidata, obviously CC by isn't uh, public domain. Um, is there a, an issue there? I mean, not that data is copyrightable anyway, so it's the wrong license for a data base, but, um, <laughs> Um, well, the data imported so far is like dates and uh, identifiers. Um, so um, I don't think there's an issue with those. If uh, there might be, uh, I don't know, like if they have sort of text descriptions of departments, there may be other issues around if you were going to sort of uh, import those, um, but you probably don't want to because they're a bit of a mess anyway. Um, but that sort of basic metadata, I don't, I don't uh, I think there's a problem. Uh, Pro, you had a question? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Lots of questions, but I guess just going to, right, if we, you know, if we were going to do more, um, give more grants, two questions. One, what could we do? Yeah, what does Wikidata need to make it more accessible for people to work in? And, and, and then how do we actually attract people to want to do that work? So, you know, where's, how, what kind of things could, be attractive to past researchers, for instance. Yeah, um, I've had a number of, uh, you know, since doing this work, I've been talking to people about different sorts of projects and really, um, you know, it, it changed my uh, thinking around a number of things and thinking that, you know, really they should be going to Wikidata first in terms of starting to, um, uh, for example, today, so at this workshop, um, there was somebody who was talking about um, bringing together resources relating to designers in Australia. Um, and yes, I know there's already DAO, the um, um, Directory of uh, Archives. <laughs> Sorry, my words are really going now. Um, but um, uh, but they, they want something a bit different. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, I, I really thought that, uh, thanks for the link to DAO, yeah. Um, 
but I really thought that, uh, you know, in terms of what they were wanting to do, which was actually just create linkages between collections and information about people and things like that, um, you know, it was something to be done within Wikidata, and then they could, uh, you know, build a uh, an interface to that uh, on on top of that data, um, uh, rather than create yet another platform or yet another um, you know database or whatever. Um, so I think there's, and obviously you know there, there's been work done by GLAM organisations across the world making use of Wikidata and more and more. Um, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps a bit less in Australia than say in Europe or or the US, um, specifically around um, you know putting their own identifiers within Wikidata in a way that enables them to find those connections. Uh, uh, with uh, with other uh, people and collections and things like that. Um, and uh, again, I've had some conversations around that recently about, um, you know, encouraging organisations to, to do more of that, um, just to understand the value they get uh, in terms of uh, enrichment by um, sharing uh, their own uh, identifiers and information. Um, so, um, I mean, I know you're doing all that already, but I mean, I think, I suppose, just sort of reinforcing those sorts of opportunities and, and what I can do, like through things like the GLAM workbench is to demonstrate um, some of the value that accrues from those sorts of things by showing how you can explore linkages and, and create alternative pathways and interfaces to some of this material. Um, I think um, you know, in terms of HASS researchers, particularly, I suppose, my discipline history, um, we're still at the beginning of really understanding and working with um, a, a lot of uh, uh, data uh, collections. Um, uh, so, you know, a lot of my work is basically pointing to things like Trove newspapers and say, okay, well, let's not think of this as a list of search results. Let's think of this as a, as a huge data corpus that we can explore in all sorts of ways. Uh, and people are starting to, to do that um, and starting to explore those data possibilities. And I think sort of Wikidata then sits alongside those sorts of other uh, platforms and projects in terms of humanities data um, and seeing the possibilities again for linking some of these things up, um, which aren't possible in the platforms themselves. Um, and that's sort of what I'm going to be talking about at the, the WOW uh, conference is really those possibilities for building around sort of GLAM collections using a, a variety of tools like Wikidata and creating these sort of alternative ways of seeing and using and exploring them. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, uh, and yeah, I suppose, um, uh, no, I think that's probably all I had to say. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for your advocacy, you know, because, you know, you have an important voice in that um, area. So really, you know, happy for you to connect people with Wikidata or with us if they need um, further support. Great. Awesome.